Hi, I'm Matt. And I'm Tat. And welcome to, to Matt, Matt and Tat's, Tat's Excellent, Excellent Adventures. Adventures. Since March 2020, we've been living in Tijuana, Mexico and commuting to San Diego, California. We're expecting a baby in September 2020. So all of our prenatal appointments are actually in La Jolla, California but it's three times as expensive to live in San Diego as opposed to Tijuana, Mexico. In this video, we will list the pros and cons to living in Tijuana versus San Diego and give you all the tips so that you can make the commute easier. If you work online or only go to San Diego once or twice a week for work, then you might benefit from living in Tijuana, Mexico. However, if you have a full-time job and need to make the commute every day, you may find living in San Diego more beneficial. First, let's go over some of the pros and cons of living in Tijuana, Mexico. A pro would be the entertainment on the streets. And if you have some change, give them some change because it'll make their day. There's more variety of street food. There's a lot more produce. You can get tacos for between a dollar to three dollars on the street. So there's cheaper restaurants and coffee shops. So you can expect to pay anywhere from five dollars a plate to ten dollars a plate for like a typical lunch, or anywhere from ten to twenty dollars for a sit-down dinner. And that's actually kind of a fancy type of dinner. We've also split plates because the plates are so big and. The groceries are typically cheaper too. You can go to stores like Cali Max, Soriana, uh, what else, there's Walmart. There's also an OXXO, which is mostly a convenience type of store that you would find like at a gas station. All right, and transportation is great. You know, for a Uber ride, you know, it would cost you normally $20 in San Diego. It costs about four to $5 in Tijuana. We didn't ride the buses there anywhere from like, I think uh, 35 cents to 80 cents, but uh, they look kind of dirty and dangerous. So we didn't take the chance. And then they also have these vans that can pick you up. Um, we saw some of them wearing masks. So most Uber drivers were wearing their masks and they also had hand sanitizer in the car. And sometimes they would have like a plastic shield between their driver's side and the back seat. So we felt safe most of the time in an Uber. You could also take a taxi, but the prices aren't guaranteed. Make sure that you pay ahead of time before getting in the cab, and then you state the address and make sure that they know the address of where you're going so they don't give you the runaround. And oftentimes, if you're taking a taxi, you know, if you're a tourist, they try to increase the prices. So I often try to work with them and negotiate a better price. Yeah, and Uber is usually a guaranteed price no matter who you are, so we prefer that. The dentists are also cheaper there too. Uh, for uh, cleaning, it's about $20. Normally in the US, I, found that, I find that it costs about $65 for a cleaning. And we have white clean teeth. Smile! <laughs> And for a deep cleaning, it's $40. And that typically includes an x-ray and both either the $20 or the $40 includes a free consultation. So there's cheaper haircuts. Matt can get a haircut for anywhere between eight and $10. And that usually includes the tip. And then- No, it doesn't include the tip. It's $15 with the tip. $15? I like to tip the guy generously. What can I say? <laughs> but it was $8. I know, I'm You're pretty generous to the guy. That's like double. But I, I figure, I figure like the the U.S. haircuts are like twenty five to thirty dollars. So why not, you know, give him a little bonus and make his day by giving him a, an, a bonus tip. You know, especially yeah. if he does a good job. Only if he does a good job, really. If he does a bad job, small tip. Yeah. Well, I'm kind of a little bit cheaper, I guess, but I usually give twenty to twenty five percent tip. Massages are anywhere between $30 and $40, and that includes a tip too. But of course, you can be more generous. And then also you can get your nails done. Um, I got gel nails uh, on my manicure and pedicure, and that was about $35 for both together, which is about half the price that it is in the US. And Mexicans are very nice people in general. 
and even if you're on the street and you're about to cross the crosswalk they will stop for you and wait for you and for the most part i felt more safe going into spaces versus here in the u.s in mexico if you go into any store or restaurant or um, coffee shop nail salon whatever they check your temperature. You also have to step on a sanitizing pad to sanitize the bottom of your shoes. And then they also give you hand sanitizer. And at a nail salon I went to, they even sprayed me with some kind of, I don't know if it was rubbing alcohol and water, but they sprayed me. So they are taking it very seriously. And in the US, I found that lacking quite a bit. And one of my favorite parts is that I get to learn and practice Spanish. Yo hablo espanol. <laughs> <laughs> and now we'll go into some of the cons. All right, so let's first talk about the trash. So in Tijuana, they put trash on the street so that it can be picked up. So there is a pickup day, but they don't have bins like they do here in the U.S. And instead, it's scattered, scattered all over the streets. And then when it's windy, it kind of goes everywhere. So it looks dirtier. Of the sidewalks are on a whole nother level. When you're walking on the sidewalks, yeah, it's kind of like an obstacle course. You'll see holes there, you'll see little bumps and little things you gotta jump over every now and then. It's San Diego's a little better compared to Tijuana. And also sometimes you'll have to dodge some dog poop in the road. People in Tijuana will ask you for money or try to sell you things, but they're not that aggressive. I've been to more touristy cities in Mexico and um, it can get really annoying but mostly if you say no gracias and you kind of like walk away they'll leave you alone uh, we haven't had any issues where someone was constantly bothering us or anything another thing you have to remember if you're in Tijuana is not to put toilet paper down the toilet uh, their plumbing system is completely different so it'll back up and then you'll have a plumbing problem so you always have to remember to throw it into the trash in Tijuana, we only found a recycling facility that recycles aluminum. So that was a bit of a problem for me because I love recycling and, and knowing where my trash is going. But unfortunately, I had to throw everything in the same bin. And so the showers, well, sometimes you'll get in a shower. It'll be warm for like the first minute. Like, ah, this feels great. Finally get to clean off in a warm shower. And then all of a sudden it goes really, really freezing cold. Yeah, pretty much. Or it'll be like extremely hot too, and then you'll try and turn it down, and then you don't have hot water anymore. <laughs> or it just won't, will be cold the entire time. It's, it's kind of like a questionable thing, you know? You don't really know what it's, what's gonna, how it's gonna be. Yeah, it's a hit or miss. I don't think they have like an actual water heater where they heat all of the water, and that's kind of what you get. I think it's an electrical thing that only works when you actually turn on the shower. Well, parks is another thing because a lot of times during quarantine we weren't actually able to go check out the parks or go inside the parks they were just blocked off but when we did go to the parks you know they're they're uh they're a lot smaller and they're of course surrounded by a lot of city so they're not quite as good as san diego parks which i love yeah san, san diego parks definitely have tijuana beat the parks in san diego i don't think you can beat them most places in the United States, actually. Uh, San Diego is a really uh, special place. One of the parks. best. I mean, you got Balboa Park, which is awesome. Yeah. And then you also got, you know, Sunset Cliffs, and mm -hmm. you have, I mean, there's just so many. So many different parks. Yeah. yeah. So we love San Diego parks. So if you're going to go shopping and you want to buy quality brands like Nike, Adidas, or whatever, or even electronics like Sony, Panasonic, it's better to buy it in the U.S. You'll find a better price for it, and you'll also know that the product is original. Uh, in Tijuana, they're not as strict with the laws for copyrights and trademarks and so forth, and so they may sell you something that isn't really that brand. So that's kind of the risk you're taking when you're shopping for those things in Tijuana. Okay, so the first thing you want to try and apply for is global entry. And what that is, it's like a passport, but it's actually a card. And you would have to talk with an officer and then do a background check. And then you can 
be approved for this card and then you can go to and from the border very easily it's a lot faster and so if you're walking across um, basically all you have to do is apply for a type of visa if you want to stay longer than a week um, it costs thirty dollars and you can stay up to six months or you can go and stay for a week at no charge as a tourist um, and then to come back all you have to do is go skip the line usually the line is like two to three hours and you just show your global entry card to the officers and walk right in and then you go to the right um, what next to the center on the sentry lane so every time you see sentry or global entry just go into that and usually there's no line and you'll just talk with an officer for about a minute and he might ask you why you were in Tijuana and you can just say I was there to shop or whatever and they'll let you right through it's a lot easier it saves you so much time totally worth it and then how much does it cost it's around a hundred dollars to get your sentry pass and that includes everything including the pre-check as well and if you just want the pre-check it's uh, 85 dollars to get that okay and then how can you save money by getting it for free and a trick that you can get is the venture capital one card and with that you get it for free yeah and there's other credit cards that also give you global entry for free so we'll list that in the description below so that you can just click on those links and it'll send you right there Another pro tip for getting in and out of the country is just to not have anything to declare. So leave all the fruits and vegetables at home because those can get you into trouble. I remember I had an apple with me and it was a big deal. They did not allow it. They said I could actually lose my global entry card and also be fined for $10,000 because of that apple. So they gave me a warning that time, but I didn't know. And so just make sure you check on the government website what you can and not bring uh, to and from the, each country. So for our phone service, we have T-Mobile and it's great because they allow international service as long as you uh, pay your monthly premium. You also have free unlimited Wi-Fi, which is cool, except for after using it for three months, they kind of limit your service. So we both have T-Mobile and we share a plan. We're on a family plan. We've got a good rate, but we're grandfathered in. But anyways, they give you um, free unlimited Wi-Fi to use in Tijuana. And also you can make calls and texts for free. And that's been super helpful for us. And it's not only in Mexico, it's in several countries around the world. And so we've been able to continue our service without having to add chips to our cell phones every time we go to a place. And so it saves us time. However, the chips can be a little bit less expensive when you're going into different countries. So you can check out the price difference, but for the convenience, that was worth more to us. Hey, thanks so much for watching this video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. You can also subscribe to our channel, Matt and Tat's Excellent Adventures. We always try to give helpful tips for traveling around the world. We hope this video was helpful for you. If you are deciding to live in Tijuana and then be able to go back and forth from San Diego to Tijuana, or if you just want to check out Tijuana, it's an awesome city. There's a lot of great food, great restaurants and places to go and things to see. So. Uh, we would highly recommend it. Thumbs up. <laughs> and leave a comment below if you have any questions or concerns and we'll be happy to answer. Thanks and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.